Hello, everybody. So we are live again here with Helen. Hi, Helen. How are you? Uh, I'm good, Dinek. Hi. Hi, everyone. All right. Are you going to ask me how I am? <laughs> <laughs> how are you, Zdenek? I am all right. <laughs> now. Now I'm Thank okay. God. <laughs> but I thought I was going to die about three hours ago because I went for a run in the afternoon and how to put it, it kind of got out of control because of a, a little incident there. What happened to you, Zdenek? <laughs> you know what happened. <laughs> I have shared the photos all over the social media. You know what happened, Helen, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got, got stung. stung. I got stung. By a bee? And what have you done to upset that bee? I actually don't know if it was a bee or not, okay? But all I could find in terms of emojis was a bee. I was looking for emojis. <laughs> and um, I honestly don't know what stung me, but um, it it was unexpected. I was um, I was almost like, let's say, three quarters through my run. I wanted to say a race, but it's not really a race. It's a run. Yeah, my track, my usual track. And um, I was running um, near um, um, a busy road, yeah, which most of my run is in the fields or in, um, in the forest. And that was a busy road. So why was, why was that, in, that flying insect, that bee or, or a wasp or whatever it was, why was it there? I have no idea, Helen. It was not supposed to be there. And also, why was it in such a such a height? I, I don't think I'm a short bloke, you know. I, I'm I'm not I'm not two meters tall, but I'm one meter and eighty-five centimeters. Why why was it there? Why was it why didn't want me to run? I was not at my fastest speed either. And so and then I suddenly I felt something here. Yeah? I I felt something here. And well, at that point I didn't know I was getting stung, but it sort of didn't want to get out. And now you can see, like um it scratched me as well. It definitely stung me because my lip sw swelled. It was so massive. When I came back, it was so massive. Yeah. You could see that some something wrong with my with my face, and also now when I, whenever I look at myself in the mirror, there are scratches as well. So it I remember that moment. It was there for literally somewhere between four to eight seconds, and didn't want to get out. And I was how was I trying to get it out? I was just using my hands to get it out like that. I, it it wouldn't it wouldn't let go. <laughs> and I was so, I was so scared at that point. I was also I, I think I think I realized that something was trying to sting me, and at, it hurt a bit. Yeah, and at that point I realized, well, let's hope it doesn't go in, like in my mouth. Yeah, would have been a bother. Yeah. Yeah. So that was funny. And when as as I was running back home, I passed. Um, like a school, it was like a, I don't know, like a camp or something, like children on bicycles. And I was trying to run on the on the left side of a path, yeah? And they, they almost as if they, they didn't see me. They want, they, I told them, what are you doing, everyone? What are you doing? I had to run on the, on the grass. <laughs> didn't want to give way to me. So many cyc cycling kids, they all wearing the same shirt, you know. That was that was funny too. Nobody noticed this. But uh, yeah, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm I'm not going to die, Helen. I'm okay. Thanks for your concern. <laughs> so I'm glad that you're okay. I'm glad you survived all this. Yeah. I mean, you know what? It's it's good for my marketing, you know. Because immediately when this happened, I realized, oh, finally, some excitement in my life. <laughs> finally, I can post some photos. Of, everybody's posting like photos from the holidays and, and, and 
finally something interesting happened to me, you know, like a dangerous, a dangerous situation. I almost died because I got stung by a bee into my lip. And, and I, I, well, you know, I, I made a, I made a mountain out of a molehill or shall I say a mountain out of a beehive. I don't know. And I beehive also, I can also... be rather dangerous, you know, if you're not careful enough. <laughs> Uh, and I also realized that was my third jab. That was actually my third jab. This one might have been the, the healthiest one as well. I got a I got a third jab, you know? It was my third vaccination. This one will definitely protect me against the coronavirus. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will, because it was the, the most painful one as well. <laughs> I'm not sure if this one is an official one. <laughs> not sure if it's very no, I don't think, it's, local, I don't think so. it's approved by the 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 NHS or anything like that. We don't actually call it NHS here, but I don't think it has been approved. I don't think so either. I, I'm sure Pfizer and and AstraZeneca, all these vaccines have been approved, but I'm not sure about this B vaccine. I'm not sure. I don't, I, I'm not even sure if it was a B, to be honest. To be or not to be, Helen, I don't know. It might have been a wasp. It might have been a hornet. Can you imagine a hornet? <laughs> oh, but, you know, you ask what that be or something were doing in the road and not in the fields. But remember, the road is crossing the fields. The road is crossing her territory. Her territory. <laughs> Actually, there were some people living like by the by the road, so like they had some houses there and gardens. So I mm. mean, probably s straight there from the garden, you know. So I don't know, but it was it was really really funny. It was really funny. I I felt I felt like what on earth is going on? <laughs> and as I was running back home, I realized how how much it was getting bigger and bigger, you know. And uh, by the time I came back home, I, 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 normally I would stretch, you know, I would stretch my legs a bit. I just couldn't. I was like, oh, God, I need to take photos now. <laughs> so I started taking photos of myself, selfies, you know, of my lip. <laughs> I sent it to one of my students. I have a private student. She is a doctor. I sent it to her, you know. <laughs> what should I do now, doctor? <laughs> what should I do? I'm dying. And she, and she helped me. She helped me. She she said I, sh I should put and put some ice on it and vinegar and whatnot. You know. <laughs> so, yeah, fun times, Helen. Happy days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen you get quite uh, quite an adventure. But it unfortunately, yeah. I, I I I was planning for this mm -hmm. to to like for the lip to be still huge during this life lesson. Because I thought it would be great for impact, you know, to to show it to the viewers and to talk about it. But unfortunately, I think I almost look like like uh, my old self now. I think it it's it sort of uh, it sort of shrank. How what's the swell? You know, to swell, which is a nice verb to learn. By the way, I'm gonna let you talk soon, Helen. Sorry, I just thought I would just say, say this. To swell, I'm not I'm not letting you talk at all today. A terrible teacher. What a terrible teacher I am. But this is an important story, Helen. I I I had to tell you, okay? I had to tell you. <laughs> You've had to let it out. Yeah. I, I had to let yeah. it out of the system. Okay, so sweat to swell, it's like when usually this happens. Like for example, if you have a blister, or or if you have some, it's usually some sort of um, inflammation, you know, some sort of problem, and then yeah, it gets bigger. When right? you mm -hmm. when something gets twice the size, it is supposed <laughs> yeah. to, to be maybe three times, yeah. and it's it's it well. <clears throat> anyway, um, um, basically, it's it's I think it's some kind of reaction. From your body right so it's uh it's mm. fills with water and something like that and we say it swells i also checked what the past tense is what do you know what the past tense is from swell mm, swelled it is yeah it is, it, yeah well 
Swollen is the past participle. I always knew that one because it can also be used as an adjective. Like you can say, my mm -hmm. hand is swollen or whatever. And um, my lip was swollen. That would be like passive, right? Passive, because in passives mm -hmm. you use past participle. Yeah. But then I was like, what, what on earth is the past tense then? Is it swole? Well? Swole, like steel stole stolen? Is it swell, swole, swollen? And apparently it's not, Helen. It what swelled. You knew it. You knew it. You knew it. it swelled. Yeah. Well done. I've just said that at random. You know, no, like everything I know don't, in English. Don't say that. How do you think I teach English? How do you think I teach English? I say everything at random and nobody needs to know that I don't know. Right. Anyway, uh, Helen, um, this is your lesson. This is your lesson. So let me give you. I'm you glad you remember that. <laughs> Let me give you the opportunity to talk. And as always, everyone else who is watching can comment and uh, you can get involved pretty much. Uh, if we see interesting questions, obviously we can try to answer them. This is this is an improvised lesson, everyone. This is a dogma lesson. We're talking to Helen. I'm gonna be making notes as 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 we as I conduct this lesson, and uh, then we will also go through. Um, some mistakes and, and and explain some language and stuff like that. All right, Helen. Yeah. Have you ever been stung by a bee? As far as I can remember, uh, it never happened to me. But uh, the only exciting thing that happened to me was about uh, um, a week ago when I was filling uh, a bottle with boiling water. The <laughs> bottle... <laughs> oh, yeah, you, to you told me. I remember now. You have to tell everyone now. So what happened, Helen? Did the bottle the sting you? The bottle was full and wa I was still pouring water. <laughs> and it... Ah, Helen, <laughs> and but when... <laughs> You know, you know there there is a limit to what the water, what the bottle can take, right? <laughs> you have to stop at some point, Helen. Yeah, Don't let it overflow. <laughs> but it overflowed, indeed, and it, uh, the water, the boiling water, straight from the kettle, ran on my hand, and uh, oh my goodness! Uh, well, was so upset, it, my dear. It took me a few seconds to realize. Did it hurt? Can you Helen? believe it? Sorry? I can, yeah. I've known you for long enough to believe this, Helen, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you see, my story, that was not my fault. Literally, I was just <laughs> running in one direction as I normally do. Like, I wasn't provoking the bee. I wasn't doing anything inappropriate. I was just running <laughs> the way I'm That's supposed to run. I've been running all my life. Yeah, I'm like Forrest Gump. And then <laughs> the bee decided to to mar my jog you know the bee said to itself hey what's this guy doing here i'm gonna sting him and it sting it's it stung me a few times and it also scratched me since when do bees scratch as well <laughs> look at that why do i have scratches here like at two places that's not a sting <laughs> i have a, i have a big like I had a big leap. Anyway, Helen, go, going back to your story, <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked. What did you do? I'm not sure. Why did you, did you do, do that, Helen? Why did that happen? Because I was upset minded. <laughs> mm, you were absent minded. Okay. Um, how often does this happen to you, Helen? Uh, most every day. I don't want to rub it in. It's just funny. Sometimes I do that with my students. It's important, you know, to keep some kind of dynamic in the lesson. So I like to uh, have fun with the students, tease them, because they often forget that they are learning. You know, that's the point. Um, but some... some um, you are teasing people. I cannot believe that. You never 24, do that. Me? Never. Yeah, never. <laughs> of course. 24-7, Helen. Uh, I feel like it can be quite effective to to learn English. <laughs> I'm not even sure what I'm saying anymore, Helen. But uh, going back to your 
incident, for mm. your little incident. So that was um, obviously um, a you know a bit of absent mindedness, as you said. And so, how did you treat um, that injury? It was could we consider it an injury? It could have been, but uh, I'm glad um, it healed uh, really well. Uh, first thing I've done it, uh, was to put um, baobab oil on it. Don't ask what? me why I baobab, baobab. You know this. I have no uh, idea what that is, but I believe I believe you, Helen. <laughs> it's an African tree. Okay. It's not the most common oil used to to treat bones, but uh, it really helped to to ease the the pain and the burning. We are using some very nice vocabulary to ease the pain. Mm -hmm. Another mm -hmm. word is to alleviate, alleviate, alleviate the pain. That's another good one. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a new one for me, alleviate. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll write it down. Here's the pain. Go and, on, go on, keep, keep going. And then I've put some clay, green clay on it. You know. What? Uh, what? what did you put clay, on it? Clay, green clay. clay. Yeah, green clay. Since, yeah. When is, since when is clay green? I always thought clay is brown. <laughs> you know, clays come in every, uh, not shapes and colors, it's always the same shape, but you have um, pink clay, white clay, green clay, red clay. And, oh, uh, you mean that clay that children play with? No, 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 I uh, don't, I'm not saying the... Um, the, the kind of paste that they use to, to make some kind of shapes and play right, with it. Right, you're not talking they, about they, that. This is not clay. You can make it from at home, so, uh, 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 a natural one, so those kind of paste with uh, right. uh, uh, what's, uh, what's it with uh, water, baking soda, and uh, flour. Okay. Uh, uh, with no chemicals and na natural, okay. natural. But is it also um, something you can mold? Is it like why is it called clay then? Can you mold it? It it is called clay. Be uh, oh, uh, for the children, you mean? No, the the, the, the thing the, that you used to treat your because injury. Because it is it is clay, so I'm calling it clay. Okay, well, I, I it's fine. It I came from the earth. <laughs> Okay, I didn't know that. It comes from what? Sorry? From the earth. 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 What's that? Earth. Can you spell it for me? Can you... Like the planet Earth. Oh, Earth. Okay. <laughs> Let's work on the pronunciation a little bit here. Okay, repeat no, no, after no, me, Helen. Yes, 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 yes. Repeat after me. Earth. Yeah. Earth. Uh, open your mouth and it's a long vowel. Uh, yeah? Earth. Yeah? Earth. Earth. Uh, the reason it's uh, difficult is because you have uh, which is itself a difficult vowel for English learners, mm -hmm. and then you have also th sound, which is a difficult consonant. So it's a combination of two difficult sounds. Earth. Earth. It's just these two sounds. It's incredible. It's a long word. How do we spell it, Helen? How do we spell earth? E A G H. No, you forgot about e R. There's R in the middle as well. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Of course. No, don't worry, don't worry. And in British English, there's no R because it's obviously in American English you would say Earth, right? Earth. Mm -hmm. But in British English, it would just say Earth. 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 That's it. Earth. So, it, so it's just two sounds: uh and th. Earth. 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 That's it. Perfect. You have perfect pronunciation, Helen. Nice one. <laughs> uh, earth. Earth. Yeah. Okay, let's hope I remember the <laughs> Let's hope you keep it up, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, clay uh, came in a wide, uh, wide range of colors. Okay. Can, can, can you used, you used, you used the, what was it? Blue? Sorry, I forgot the color, what the color was. Green. It's, it's the most oh, common. Green. Okay, of course it's green. Oh my God. How could I have forgotten? <laughs> I'm not paying attention to what my student is saying here. I'm focusing on stupid grammar, but the most important fact, the most important piece of piece of information here, that is that the clay was green, everyone. It was green. All right. <clears throat> it's the most common kind of clay you can um, find uh, in your local uh, organic shop. 
I was thinking you would say in your local forest or <laughs> no local organic shop. Okay, well, I don't have any organic shops here, so I honestly don't know how I would find it here. But uh, most, most likely people find... don't get it in the wild, but um, mm. we live in towns, so, so we, we get everything in shops. I've got some bad news, Helen. Okay. There's a fly. Spit it, spit it out. There's a, there's a fly here, and it's it's really annoying. I'll have to kill it sooner or later. Hopefully I'm, for I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I have a. I have a. I have a. What's the expression? I have a bee in my bonnet about about insects now. You know, I I've got a thing for insects now. What's what's the? There's another expression. When you when so, something keeps sort of annoying you, I've got, I've got to think about it, right? Is that one? Should, let's check it. I've got a bee in my bonnet about it. I think you could say. Oops, when you uh, obsessively yeah. think about some yeah. something again and again and again, yeah. and some more. Gonna, let me check something here. Uh, wait. It's it's just. It just wants to eat me or something. I don't know. Why is it? Oh, Get out! Fortunately, flies don't sting, so I know. You can relax. But, but this one is like normally flies. When you sort of like wave it away, they will just leave, right? They will let you. They will let you be. But this one just keeps coming back. I don't know why. Aha! If you have a thing. For someone, I think you, it means you like them. But I thought there's, there was a similar phrase. Anyway, Helen, anyway. And to have a bee in your bonnet about something, I think that means you're obsessed about something, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's say I have, a, I have a, some bad experience with insects lately. So, um, <laughs> you know, this, this, this fly might um, not survive. By the end of this um, video, it might be uh, pushing up the daisies. So, Zdenek, I'm going to tell you something that may put you in a state of shock. But oh, well, that, that... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm doing that kind of thing. Okay, well, <sighs> thank you for preparing me for it. By the way, that's so kind of you, Helen. You know me, Zdenek. I know you more um... than. You. More than well, yes, that's right. Go Sorry on then, you. go on. So you've got some... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Anxiety I, I'm gonna with insects. Down first. I'm going to sit down first. Okay, I, I'm sitting. Uh, yeah. So in order to protect the biodiversity, some people are putting in into the wild some uh, insect hotels. Yeah, there, there is such things as bug hotels, insect hotels. What? <laughs> how does it work? Uh, how does it work? Work. Uh, it, uh, it's a kind of uh, small, um, small, not not building, so small construction with uh, bricks and uh, branches and everything, all kind of hollow space to help. Um, uh, insects and uh, wi wildlife insects all, uh, of all kinds, bees uh, and um, and whatnot, uh, to to have a shelter and to to lay eggs, to lay eggs, and mm -hmm. to just not to disappear and just to protect the wildlife. Wow! Oh, you said it's hollow spaces. What is it hollow? Did you say hollow? Hollow, hollow. Okay. You 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 mean things with a hole in it? Like a kind of tube. Wait, if something is hollow. It means there is no, there is nothing inside, you know. Like a straw. You mean like yeah. uh, all like kinds straw, of branches? Straw is hollow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's what you meant, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just like making sure we are on the same page. Uh, hollow spaces. Those, those are very nice uh, words and expressions. So we need to make a note of this, you know, because we might go through it later. Okay. What about the insect restaurants? As we know, Helen, you are a vegan. So what's your <laughs> attitude towards uh, insect restaurants? Because I know they exist. 
Uh, well, <laughs> I know that some people uh, eat insects. Mm. Uh, I know it's a normal fact in uh, all kind of cultures. Um, vegan or not, it's a thing I, I would probably never do in my life. Not if never my say life never, is... Helen. Never say never. Unless my life depends, my survival depends on it. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> if it, okay. it doesn't go to that point, I okay. think uh, maybe if they are well crunched and with so, some so, sugar. So, but that means that means you are not uh, you are not a uh, very orthodox vegan then, because you you would you would eat meat if your life depended on it. Are you a true vegan, Helen? What would the other vegans say? What would what would the 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 more um, the more the, the what would the more crazy vegans say, Helen? Maybe I would be thrown out. Of the club. You would be thrown out <laughs> of the community because some I, I'm sure there are vegans who would say I would rather die than <laughs> <laughs> than starve to death than than eat um, uh, a, a meat than eat meat, you know. Uh, insects? Is that even meat? I don't think so. It's an animal. It depends when you draw the line. Uh, most I beg, <laughs> I beg to differ. For example, I, I I I treat my cat differently to this fly. I would kill this fly. I would never keep. Uh, I would never kill the the cat. So it, it's not the same for me. I don't think it's uh, fair. I, I don't think it's fair to cats to consider insects. Um, um, animals, to be honest. Well, the, the, sure, they are different. Uh, veganism is not uh, exactly about this. Hmm. Uh, it's about not uh, not inflicted, not inflicting uh, unnecessary suffering when we can avoid it. Wow, what a sentence! It's that about the spirit inflicting. Unnecessary suffering. It's about what do you can you repeat the sentence? It's such a good sentence. I need to write it down. It's about, it's about uh, trying to to do everything possible to uh, to avoid inflicting unnecessary suffering to animals. You, Helen, do you realize this was a super high level sentence? A very complex, full of. A very advanced vocabulary. So it's about trying to do everything possible to avoid to inflict unnecessary suffering to, to animals. Unnecessary suffering of animals. Wow. What a sentence. It's gonna be the sentence of the of the <laughs> week, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> you, right. you know that, that's the that's the good part of being obs obsessed by a subject and watching over and over different kind of yeah. videos and uh, and articles yeah. uh, about the subject in english so <laughs> you you get that that kind of language <laughs> to, to no later get, get stuck in your head <laughs> just okay, in the got, natural way <laughs> we've got some interesting comments helen from from our viewers as well from our video viewers Okay, yeah. where do we even start? Um, well, Narod Narod says hi. Narod says uh, she. Narod says he is a huge fan of us both. Uh, because when he, when <laughs> he, you, he wrote, he's a huge fan of you. He's a huge fan of you. And I was like wondering, who does he mean? Does he mean Ellen or does he mean me? And then and then to fix it, he wrote both. You know, so so that we wouldn't argue here. <laughs> <laughs> it must be that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then Nina, who is also watching us, she says that um, who would have expected that running is so dangerous? <laughs> or who would have thought, you can say, Nina, you can also say, who would have thought that running is so dangerous? Um, uh, well, we have got Irena here as well, hard earned skills. That is, uh, that is Irena, as far as I know. And um, she says that your facial expression is, and because she said it, 
20, uh, 19 minutes ago, it has to be was now. Your facial expression 19 minutes ago was priceless, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> what, when you say something is priceless, is that a is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Priceless. Mm -hmm. Priceless. When I use it, it's in a positive way. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because the word less, yeah, mm -hmm. is mostly it's used as a negative, like it's a negative suffix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lack of something. For example, for example. Something missing. Yeah. I don't have a clue. I'm clueless. Yeah. I have no idea what's happened. I'm clueless when it comes to teaching these lessons. I'm clueless. It's a negative thing. But priceless, that's actually a positive thing. If something is priceless, you cannot put a price on it. That's how good it is, or that's how um, you know uh, important it is. So your expression was so good, apparently, Helen. I can't. I will have to. I'll have to watch it back. <laughs> I have a look at the video. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let, let me just write down the word priceless because it's another one we can explain. That's a good word for sure. Um, oh, and Zdenek's expression, Zdenek's facial expression is also also priceless. <laughs> apparently. Okay. Well, thank for that. Again, another person who who is who who is making sure we don't argue here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you painting us with the same brush, Rod and Irena? Okay. Yaman, Yaman says hi. Hello, Yaman. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, Irena says she's cracking up at the clay talk. <laughs> That's a good phrasal verb to crack up. To crack up, I know to crack jokes. Does it mean she uh, she's having a lot of fun? She's laughing, basically. Eh? She's cracking mm -hmm. up. She she's having a she's having a laugh. To so crack up. It's a phrasal verb. Crack up. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to make you laugh, Irena. And then Sida also came along and she says, Hey, teachers, then Hey, Rod. But unfortunately, she doesn't say, Hey, Helen. <laughs> you know, you know why? Because it's such it's such a tongue twister, eh? Hey, Helen. <laughs> How do you even say? Well, but she's typing it. She could have typed it. See that. I have a word with her. <laughs> how, how dare you see that to greet Rod, who is not even in this video, and not Helen? <laughs> you should have a word with her. A very good expression, by the way, to have a word with someone. Uh, which word should you have with her, Helen? <laughs> in fact, it would be more than one word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, this is a joke that I uh, stole from a TV show, Mind Your Language. If any of you know it, um, um, uh, the teacher, it's, it's about an English teacher who teaches a group of international students. It's, it was, it, it, it's, it's from like 70s, so it's really like 50 years old. It's super old. I think most of the actors are not even alive anymore. But I remember this, um, this joke. So uh, the teacher is British and he says to one of his students, I need to have a word with you. And uh, the, the student says, which word? <laughs> which word do you want to have with me? <laughs> to have a word with someone. What does it mean, Helen? To have a word with someone. Uh, to have some kind of how to heart um, conversation. <laughs> You know, Helen, let me tell you something here. <laughs> Never explain an idiom by, uh, by using another idiom. That is the worst possible teaching you can do as an English teacher. Wait a minute, you are a student. So you will get away with it. You'll get away with it. I'll let you off. You have a heart to heart. Okay. So um, It spoils all the fun uh, out of it. <laughs> I know, no. but we are not. So, this is not in the insane idiom hour, Helen. In, the insane idiom hour is happening every Friday at 9 p.m. in Learn English Online Discord group. You know that. You always join. And everyone else can join too. What a shameless plug that was by me, right? <laughs> so to have a word with someone is when you are um, angry at this person or if this person uh, has done something wrong and yeah. or something that uh, doesn't suit you 
and you really need to um, to clarify some things yep. um, you you can say you you will have a, a word with, mm -hmm. with this person you need to talk to this person mm. you need to talk to this person a, a boss yeah. could say to their staff member i need to have a word with you and that usually signifies something is something bad is going to happen the person might get fired or be told off or or the uh, their salary could be reduced or something like that you know so a very good phrase to have a word with someone so sida i think you are in trouble you are in for some trouble i'm afraid okay uh so uh, nina says Clays are amazing as uh, as face masks. Uh, you can't say uh face masks, yeah. Uh uh uh, uh is for countable nouns um, and uh, in singular, and face mask is in plural. So you have to say as as uh, as face masks would be fine to be honest. Also, can you say clays? Shouldn't you say clay because it's uncountable, right? Yeah, it, when it's un uh, uncountable, sometimes where where when it's different kind of place, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, right, you can yeah. you can count you can count exactly. Them. It's yeah, totally. It's like yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, um, as so as, the, case, mate as yes. the material, if you're referring to the material, it's clay, and you shouldn't count it. You should say clay is. But I think Nina. She, she she can say clays if she means different kinds of clay. But I'm not such a clay expert, so I can't really. Honestly, this is too much too much clay talk for me already. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I think my head is going to explode soon. Um, Yaman didn't know this apparently. Don't don't worry, Yaman. Uh, we are in the same boat. I had no idea that clays are used as as face masks. I had no clue about that. I was clueless. Sida, <laughs> um, how are you? I think Rod is, Rod, Rod is um, just having a conversation with some of, um, some of the viewers here. Black flies. Black flies. I think Rod, uh, teacher Rod is from Brazil, so I, I believe black fly. All flies are black, right? Is that, is that a species, mm -hmm. a black fly? Like we have blackbird, right? We have blackbird and blackbird. So do we have like black flies, which is like a its own species that is called black flies? No. There are all all kind of uh, different species of flies. I know, so right? But, but it... Some of them are rather blue than than just with uh, <laughs> some kind of shade of blue. It's it's the uh, same. Some, with, with... It's like the clay, right? They come in all different <laughs> colors. <laughs> it's like everything about nature. Yeah. It all everything comes in all kind of shapes and, and forms and uh, and everything. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's that's a really groundbreaking discovery, Helen. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the same goes for for clays. No, that should. Yeah, be and sun, sun, um, sunshine. Sunshine was watching last time. I remember you, Sunshine. Mm -hmm. um, but I think she's using the wrong language here. I think she said, it sounds like Polish to me. I'm not Polish, uh, Sunshine. If you're trying to speak to me, the only reason I, I know this is Polish is because there is a W and CZ. And it's like, it's reminds me of Polish language. But uh, just say hello to me next time. Yeah, That will do. Uh, oh, uh, Irena, you are full of interesting language today. Um, you're stealing the thunder. Um, um, I second that. Mm. Helen's sentence is awesome. So remember when I said that you made a really interesting sentence, you came up with a really good, cool sentence. And then I want to- And now to... Irena wants to steal the thunder from me. She wants to use it, the, no, the, she... the same sentence. No, no, no. She said, I second that, which is a less common way of saying I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she says, I second that. Or you just need to write it down. Thank you, Rena. Yeah. Um, I second that. Yeah. I'm just going to write it down because it's a good it's a good piece of language. We need to finish with the comments because I hope people are stop writing comments. I always wish people <laughs> would write comments and like the videos because that helps the algorithm. Yeah, that helps the algorithm and more people will watch it. And one day I'll become a successful YouTuber. <clears throat> 
and then I wake up in the morning and it's all just a dream. Uh, I don't, I'm not even like into YouTube. I just started doing these live shows because I thought it would be cool. But uh, YouTube is not my main thing. I have a podcast called Zdenex English Podcast, everyone, if anyone wants to listen to it. Um, but uh, where was I? Yeah, I second that means um, I agree. Helen's sentence is awesome. Okay, sunshine. Worthless. Sunshine, yes. Worthless is the opposite of priceless. Worthless, if something is worthless, is really, really... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've... Um, I don't know. This pencil, yeah, this pencil keeps breaking. It's worthless. It's just every single time I try to sharpen it, the, the well, what do you call this thing in there? That main Shop. thing that, no, the main thing that, oh my God, it's, I know, it's from, I know it's from carbon. <laughs> it's from carbon. But the main isn't, thing that you draw with. <laughs> isn't that called the, the mine? You know better than me, Helen. The main thing sometimes breaks, right? If it's too Or maybe it's called the core. Let's say the core. The core I would just say the, the main pencil. thing. If you don't know, yeah. just say the main thing. Right? It's gonna work. It's always gonna work. We know thing you know what is, I'm talking It's a great problem. word thing. You can use it for everything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you have to be creative sometimes. So it keeps breaking. It's you this this one is useless or this one is worthless. Mm -hmm. But if you have got a magical pencil that uh, basically whenever you write with it, it will correct your spelling mistakes by itself. Then you could say, oh, this is priceless. So, so good, yeah. Anyway, let's keep going. We've got uh, Louise uh, has paid us a visit as well. Hello, Louise. Luis Fernando from Mexico. And um, Luis says, Oh, again, Rod is asking how everyone is. Oh, that's cool. Um, okay, okay. And so on and so forth. Nina says, thanks for the correction. You are welcome, Nina. You're welcome. I'm, I'm, I'm an English teacher, so I have to do that. All right. Uh, and um, you need to be positive about that. Uh, okay, so Helen, let's go through the language. I'm going to quickly, we don't have so much time now yeah, because I ramble too much in these lessons as always because it's difficult for me. I've been doing the podcast for eight years, yeah? And I've been, I've been an English teacher for a long time and I know, I, I obviously, I give my students uh, the, the time, you know, I give them uh, space when, like, to, I let them talk, okay? I let my students talk. Don't worry, guys. I put students in pairs and groups. I let them talk. I'm, I know what I'm doing. My teacher talking time is normally lower. But unfortunately, there's something about these live lessons. Yeah, I know everybody's watching it. Yeah, I know <laughs> it's like, it's difficult for me to, to forget about the fact that I am not supposed to be an entertainer here. Like sometimes I have to be in the podcast, right? I'm supposed to be teaching you, Helen. So sorry about this. I, I will... I will work on this, okay? It's my homework. I have a word with you later on. <laughs> <laughs> when? <laughs> when do you want to At have a word with me? the most unexpected moment. <laughs> you are talking to me right now, Helen. <laughs> oh, in private, maybe. Mm. Not like this. Not publicly. Okay. Uh, sure, Helen. Sure. Mm, okay. I said I would share the, the screen with you, but because I started talking and I can't multitask as a man, as a typical man, uh, I didn't do it yet. Share screen. What happened? What have I done? Is anybody there? Hello? Hello? Oh, God. Are you there? I'm here. Hello? Yeah, it froze my screen. I wanted to share the screen, not freeze it. Helen? You know how I feel in front of my computer now. Yes, yes, it's the same thing. Uh, okay, can you guys see it? Can you guys I see the screen? See can, you, can you see the lesson notes? Yeah? I can see it's the neck. 
You can or can't? I can. You can see it. Okay, good. Uh, okay, excellent. So uh, this is uh, student Helen, nationality. What? That's a mistake. It should say French. French. Country is France, nationality French. Level C1 uh, and lesson notes. Okay, sting, to sting someone, yeah, it's a verb. It's like what these are, it's a pair of scissors, but the, the B, it stings you, yeah, and then it hurts. Sting, stung, stung. Past tense, past participle. Swell, what's the past tense, Helen? Swelled, 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 and swollen, 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 swollen. Right. It should be. I'm gonna check it. Just the pronunciation, in my opinion, is swollen. I'm gonna check it because you never know. Swollen, swollen. Yes, it is correct. Trust your English teacher. I uh, shrink, shrunk. Uh, shrink, sh shrunk, uh, shrunk. It's kind of the opposite of uh, swell, right? In a way. Okay. Um, uh, okay. It overflowed. Is this correct? To overflow. It should it's written be... in red, uh, so it's not good for me. Yeah, it's correct. It's correct. I'm ju <clears throat> I just checked it. Um... Of course, it is correct. Oh, my God. All right. I don't know why I marked it wrong. Sorry. Don't, don't mind me, Helen. You don't mind me anyway, I know, but <laughs> especially now. <laughs> how do you pronounce this one? How do you pronounce this one? You said that this is how you are sometimes, right? Uh, how do you pronounce yeah. it? Yeah. Absent-minded. Now it was much better. Which word is more stressed? Which Absent This is a compound noun. It, it, Sorry, I was talking over you. This is a compound noun. It has two parts. It's an adje It's um, it kind of is an adjective, right? So, the first part is more stress, or the second part? Uh, it seems to me it's the first part. Absent-minded. No, absent-minded. Okay. She's very absent-minded. It's these these compounds which end with ed. For example, um, left-footed. A footballer is left-footed, yeah? Or, I am right-handed. I'm absent-minded. She's absent so narrow-minded. It should be stressed. The second part is more stressed. But don't worry about it too much. The th the f okay, this was a mistake. This was a mistake. Did I spell the word baobab correctly, by the way? <laughs> uh, it seems correct to me. Uh, the okay. first thing uh, uh, I've done is... To put baobab oil on it. What's wrong with this, Helen? The first thing you were telling you were done. telling us a story. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, was was to put a baobab oil on it. Uh, was was to um, put... no easier way to fix this. How do you fix my mouse though, which stopped working? Uh, this you need to change this. The first thing I did I did and that's it yeah the first thing I did was to put yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's not related to, to the present uh, yeah no not at all so the, yeah, the past simple mm -hmm. yeah yeah to ease the pain that was like good vocabulary from you that's why I wrote it down and I also came up with a synonym to alleviate pain. Mm -hmm. Let me just quickly check the pronunciation to alleviate, I think it's pronounced. Alleviate. Alleviate, yeah. Alleviate, yeah. Correct. Um, alleviate. So it, the stress is on Lee. Wait, I need to underline it. Okay, got it. Now, this one is for you to practice, Helen. Where do we live? On Earth. Earth. Much better. Much better. On Earth. Earth. On Earth. Earth. On Earth. Earth. Yep. Yeah, that's good. How do you pronounce this? Insect hotels. Good. So the stress in the word. I can't Ho say it now because you would the, know. The Where, where's the, the second syllable is stress? Hotels. A lot of students from my own country, from the Czech Republic, miss 
mispronounce this word because they stress the first syllable for some reason. It has to be hotel. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Insect hotels. Yeah, it's insect hotels. I think, I think, would you say insect hotels? I think you would say insect hotels because it's like a compound noun again, right? So you would say insect hotels. The stress is on in the word insect, I guess. Um, this was from you, hollow, hollow spaces, yeah? So uh, mm, hollow means uh, basically the, the space inside of something. I'm just wondering, well, I have something here that is hollow. Uh, I can't see anything. I would show to our viewers. The closest I have is this. Do you know what? Okay, this this is gonna be a. I'm gonna play a game with you, Helen. Yeah. Do you know what this is for? Uh, I cannot see it very well. Uh, oh, it to it, it is to crush nuts. That's right. It's to crack crack nuts. So, I had some walnuts here. Yeah? So you put it in, and then, and then you just screw it like that. Oh, it's all over the place now. <laughs> you have to, you have to uh, twist it. The word "twist" yeah, mm -hmm. is better, I guess. Uh, yeah. Okay, where were we? Uh, all <sighs> Kindle? No. What was I thinking, Helen? All kinds. All kinds, not Kindle. That's something different. <laughs> Amazon Kindle. All kinds of. In By the way, this is not paid promotion. YouTube, yeah. I, just, <laughs> I have to say this. All kinds of insects and whatnot. I don't know why I marked it purple because there was no pronunciation problem. What I liked about this, Helen, is and whatnot. It's a, a really, really cool phrase. What does it mean when you say uh, and whatnot? And all kind of uh, other things I uh, uh, yeah. cannot think of uh, right now. But, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, when you are naming a few different things. Like I, I like football, volleyball, basketball, and then there are some phrases. And so you can say and so on or etc. Mm -hmm. You could also say you name it. Uh, mm -hmm. I should probably write this down, right? You name it, etc., uh, and so on, and so on, and so forth. Some people say, and what not is my favorite. <laughs> it's like it almost sounds like funny when you say it like that, and what not. <laughs> and you're saying it, uh, saying it regularly, you know. <laughs> I do say it a lot. Yeah, I do say this a lot because I'm I'm a huge fan. I'm a massive fan. To be honest, I I am um, I, I prefer it to uh, bees sting, stinging me on my jog on my run. I prefer uh, this phrase to that. That's how much I like this phrase. Uh, it's a normal. Okay, how do we pronounce this word, Helen? Fact. Yeah. So you know what we know why this is a problematic pronunciation. Why you have to be really careful here. Why do you have to be careful here, Helen? What is this close to in terms of its pronunciation? Helen, are you there? Have you frozen? Have we all frozen? No, I'm still here. It's Helen that is not here. Uh, well, I suppose I'm going to just go through it myself. So obviously, um, this sounds like the F word, you know, the, the rude word. I'm not sure I can say it here on YouTube. Everybody knows it, right? Uh, F-U-C-K, that word. And um, the, the way Helen pronounced it, it wasn't wasn't correct, I think, because it should be pronounced fact. Ah, there's a ah sound. Helen, are you are you there? No? no, I think she's gone. I think she ha I think she had it enough, everyone. So fact, yeah. Um, be careful because uh, 
if you say fucked, it's problematic because it sounds like like the like the swear word, yeah, basically. Um, you know what's the beauty of this? That Helen can still watch this because this will get published after after I end the live session. So Helen can actually listen to this again uh, if she wants to. It's about trying to do everything possible to avoid inflicting unnecessary suffering of animals. That, uh, hmm. It says here that it's not correct. My collocation error checker says that this should... I feel like this is fine, unnecessary. Okay, maybe you should say animal suffering. Maybe sounds better. Suffering of animals sounds a bit awkward. But that doesn't stop it from being a fantastic... That doesn't prevent it from being a fantastic sentence. So Helen nailed it here with this sentence. I would say unnecessary animal suffering. Let's see what, what the spell checker says when I change it. Animal suffering. I think that's going to be much better. Yeah, you see? The spell checker likes this. Um, so is the neck. I've got an issue with my device. Okay, well, that's okay. fine, Helen. Yeah, the, uh, there is a bit of an echo, but we are about to finish, so who cares? Um, I'm going through through the language, and I'm almost oh, I'm almost at the end. Priceless. So we said priceless is a positive word. Something is priceless. You can't put a price on it. Uh, the opposite would be worthless and useless. And remember, I also use the word clueless. Anybody is uh, making notes here? which you should be definitely doing as, as, as the students who are watching this. I know there are some teachers watching this, um, but um, if you are a student and you're learning from this, you're learning new words, you should make notes for sure. So crack up, that was Irena's phrase verb, to crack up. It's, um, it's making you laugh, it's, you're cracking up. Uh, I should have a word with her. To have a word with someone, yeah. Have a word with uh, someone. Very, very good idiom. I second that. Another sort of expression. That means I agree. Helen? So, any last words? Yeah. Is that it? Just yeah. <laughs> you think it will do, Helen? You think it and always uh, keep and always keep a bag of clay in your house. It's very useful to take every kind of <laughs> of ailments, and it, it yeah, can yeah. make your skin just uh, purify what, what? your skin and make it everything Whoa. wonderful. Okay, okay, Helen. What color? Okay. What color is preferable? Okay. Let's say green. Again, it's 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 used for everything. It's the most polyvalent clay. <laughs> okay. It's can the most. It's the most what? Polyvalent. What is that? Don't tell me it, is, it isn't used. Uh, oh, you mean in prevalent? English. Did you mean prevalent? Pre prevalent is the mo uh, most common, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, I've said polyvalent. Wow, I've Don't never heard it. Most. Polyvalent. I think it exists. No, no, oh my god. Uh, whew, it exists. It means polyvalent. Poly First of all, it's pronounced polyvalent, and it means oh it's a it's a specialized vocabulary from chemistry. Uh, it's used to refer to atoms and molecules that have a va valency of three no, or no, more. No, 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 I sure. think we're gonna leave it here, Helen. I think we <laughs> No, it wasn't no. meaning. Uh, no, no, no. There's uh, another I meaning. There's an, I, I was just kidding. There's another meaning. Having or using a lot of different forms or features. Is that what you meant? You you can use it for all kind of um, all kind of things. To be honest, like I don't want to use it because if I ever use it, nobody will understand what it means. So <laughs> only Helen, only Helen will. 
Anyway, Helen, it's been a, a real pleasure to um, teach you today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson yourself and everybody so else who's watching job. this. And um, I'm glad I, I'm glad uh, people in the chat second that, and they they say they are saying that they've never heard this word before. They second that. That's good. That's good. Anyway, Helen, thank you for teaching us this word, polyvalent and polyvalent sorry polyvalent and yeah i guess we will leave it there helen take care right goodbye bye. everyone goodbye the next bye bye